More can return to the workplace as work from home measures ease. Larger crowds for various events also allowed from the 19th of August. For a closer look at what's ahead in Singapore, we're joined by Professor Dale Fisher from the Yonglu Lin School of Medicine. He is also chair of the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network at the WHO. Professor Fisher, what's the basis for a vaccinated versus unvaccinated approach? And what are some of the challenges? Thanks, Steve. It's a mitigation policy, really. Um, if people are, are, are unvaccinated, then, then they're still vulnerable. So, so therefore, you want to protect them in other ways if they haven't had the vaccine. So, so we can't really remove the sort of distancing and avoiding crowds, which we've all had to do for so long. We can only really remove it for the vaccinated people. So in, in that sense, it's not designed as a punishment. It's more designed as a, a mitigating measure to, to protect those people. Vaccinated people have got a really very tiny chance of severe disease. Uh, but also unvaccinated people are actually more contagious. So, so we don't want them going into large gatherings where there could be circulation of virus and therefore uh, in, uh, infecting other unvaccinated people. So sort of back to the start. Professor Fisher, we know that going zero COVID isn't the goal for Singapore, but how does vaccination or regular testing for workers in selected sectors, that's coming up in October, how's that going to help us move to this COVID endemic Singapore? So again, because everyone's not vaccinated, we have to um, mitigate the risk to vulnerable groups. So if you look after elderly or you look after patients in the hospital, then, then if, if staff are vaccinated, then you can be much more comfortable that, that they're not going to get infected. And if they are infected, they won't be as infectious. So if you're not vaccinated, then we need to test those people and keep them away from those vulnerable groups. Also, people at the front lines, uh, such as the borders, people in mask-free areas, and they mentioned F&B and, and gyms, uh, they've got a different reason. They're, they're actually at higher risk of getting infected. So we want to diagnose them early so that we can look after them. So in that sense, we're looking after them, but we're also um, uh, preventing them from spreading it because we're not really ready to open the floodgates to COVID yet. We're just, uh, we still want to keep a lid on things. Let's talk about the vaccines. How does recognition of all shots on the World Health Organization's mm -hmm. emergency list help Singapore reopen domestically and internationally? Well, I think it's a compromise. Uh, obviously, Singapore hasn't authorised all these vaccines because they've got, uh, got extremely high standards and they want more information before they'll authorise them locally. But, but they obviously work. Otherwise, WHO wouldn't have authorised them. So, so, uh, so I think it, it's quite reasonable. Some of these people have used these vaccines because of allergy. And, and, uh, and as I say, they, they work. We, we're not sure they're the best, but... Uh, but they've got very high efficacy rates still. So, so I think it's a, it's a fair compromise to include these uh, people as, as vaccinated people. And what needs to happen now, Professor Fisher, before Singapore can move to this next stage of transition? So there's really two things going on. One, one is vaccination. And as you know, we're at 64% two jabs. But there's about 50 or 60,000 people every day now getting their second jab. So that's like this 64% will go up 1% every day uh, going forward. So you can see why they've sort of delayed opening a lot of things because we're just, uh, we, we don't want the train to leave. There's still a lot of passengers to get on. So, so we want, uh, so, so I can see why we're in that situation and, uh, and, and, he mentioned also feeling our way. This is where, where we're, we're going to pull some things back. Then we're going to look at the impact, Re ease off some more measures and look at the impact. So, so it's, it's a very sensible approach. Um, as we get more vaccinated, uh, we will get more mild and asymptomatic cases as we ease off the restrictions. But what we don't want to see is severe disease and excessive hospitalizations. That would be the the, the thing that would upset the, the progress. It does mean that the population will also need to be very cooperative when it comes to sort of all the regulations and following them. And what can we do to avoid COVID fatigue, if you like, as we move through the four stages of reopening? 
Well, it's hard to not get excited, Steve, I must say. it's uh, you, you, you see that there's uh, some genuine lifting, even though there's still a lot of clusters and numbers. And this is uh, basically making the statement as a, as a nation that we have faith in the vaccine. And, and as planned, we're going to let the vaccine take us out of this pandemic. So, so I think there's still some mopping up we need to do. And if you've got friends or family or colleagues that are unvaccinated, just, just encourage them. Tell them that there, there's about to be, uh, you know, circulating virus. And, and even though we can't tell who's vaccinated and who's not vaccinated, the virus can tell. So not only are you going to have the extra restrictions and the inconvenience, but you're also at risk of severe disease. So this is like the, I, I mentioned a train earlier. Well, now the whistle is being blown. Um, it, it's time to, to get that vaccine before, uh, before everything's opened up. Professor Fisher, thank you for putting into context why everyone needs to get on that train and get vaccinated. Professor Dale Fisher there from the Yong Lulin School of Medicine. He is also chair of the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network at the WHO.